Continuing on now with intravenous administration. When we have a machine, let me refresh your memory, you have to find milliliters per hour. And there's all kinds of machines, infusion pumps, infusion controllers. One kind though that I wanna make reference to is a syringe pump. And these are usually where there's a fairly small amount of liquid, maybe you know up to, I don't know, 60, 100 milliliters, and there's a big syringe, and this stuff is in the syringe. It's using medicine, or medicine dissolved in some liquid. And this big syringe goes in, see my syringe right here? Okay. It goes into the machine, and the machine slowly pushes the plunger down on the syringe, and it gives the patient the medication through the IV. Instead of you standing there for 30 minutes going, okay, slow down. The machine puts the medicine into the patient. So usually from these syringe pumps, it's a small amount of liquid, a small amount of medicine in liquid form, and it's for a fairly short length of time. For example, let's say we have 30 milliliters of whatever it is, some kind of medicine, probably Dudley Myosin, and we're gonna deliver it over, let's, let's say, oh, how about if we do it for 30 minutes? Forgot to put that number up there, how embarrassing. Now think about this, I've got 30 milliliters, I'm gonna do it in 30 minutes. Here's the deal, this is less than one hour. I'm not gonna do the stuff we did before. You took the milliliters divided by the number of hours. You have the answer, well that's less than one hour. First, let's just think this through. Now, if I'm giving 30 milliliters in 30 minutes, what if I kept this up for a whole hour? Well, that's a half an hour. So if I give 30 milliliters in a half an hour, of course you're not gonna keep it going, but what if you did? Then you give twice this in the whole hour, right? 60 milliliters in the entire hour. But let's show how you do this mathematically. Well, there's one way, no, two ways, three ways, four ways, we can do this. How about let's just think this out on the clock. Here's a clock. Okay, here's the hand here. In 30 minutes, this goes around 30 minutes, I'm gonna give 30 milliliters. Of course, at the end of 30 minutes, my 30 milliliters in my syringe is emptied out and everything stops. But what if I kept it going? Another 30 minutes, I give 30 more milliliters. And in the whole hour, I would give 60 milliliters per hour. Now, some of you are saying, wait a minute, wait, 60. <laughs> can't you drive your car at 75 miles per hour and not, you don't have to go 75 whole miles, right? or drive for a whole hour, you can still drive your car at 75 miles per hour and not go for the whole length of time or that whole distance. Well, I have to program into my syringe pump that number, 60 milliliters per hour. And if I've got 30 milliliters of the medicine in the syringe, at the end of 30 minutes, it's all gone. But I must program the machine in to give the number in milliliters per hour. So some of these you can just kind of think out in your head using the clock, but let's show how to do it mathematically because some of you can't do it that way. I'll get some of those later. Let's say we have 30 milliliters. Well, let's divide by the minutes that we have. Well, 30 milliliters divided by 30 minutes, well, 30 over 30 is one, but we're gonna give one what? Milliliter. Ah, here, milliliter though per minute. I don't need milliliters per minute. I need milliliters per hour. Well, you probably learned this sometime back in the uh, far distant past. <clears throat> How many minutes are there in an hour? Think, think, think. Oh, 60. So since there's 60 minutes in an hour, if I take the milliliters per minute and multiply by 60, hey, because there are 60 minutes, per hour, that's 60, which I've already got. Now I'm gonna do some more of these, but that's milliliters per hour. Meaning, here's what you're doing. If you have something less than one hour, you're told how many minutes to give. You take the milliliters, you divide by the number of minutes. That will get you, though at that point, the milliliters per minute then you just multiply by 60 and that converts it to milliliters per hour. Let's do some more. Let's say we have 45 minutes to give in. Oh, let's make up something here. Doing this on the fly, oh boy. 
Um, let's give this in 20 minutes. So I'm giving 45 milliliters of some kind of liquid medicine in my big old syringe, stick that in the syringe pump, but I'm supposed to deliver that over a 20 minute time frame. Well, you could think this out maybe in your head if I give 45 milliliters in 20 minutes. That's from here down to here. And I give 45. Now, you're not going to give 45 more. You're not going to do it for another 20 minutes. But if you did, another 20 minutes will be 45 more milliliters. Another 20 minutes is 45 more. So you give 45 milliliters here, 45 milliliters, 45 milliliters. Well, 45 plus 45 plus 45, whatever that is, that's your answer. But some people have trouble thinking this out on a clock face. Let's do it this mathematical way. Once again, if we take 45 milliliters and divide by our minutes, well, what's 45 divided by 20? I don't have a clue, but my calculator knows these answers. 45 divided by 20 is 2.25. Now, don't round that off. That's 2.25, but that's milliliters per minute. Now, here's a pattern. Let me just do this. It'll crop up later on. You really shouldn't use a rounded off number in some further calculation because if you get a number, round it off, use that again in a further calculation, then round that off, you're building more and more error into your answer. So let's use that entire answer, 2.25. Don't round it off. Well, it's already there, just say 2.25. And what am I gonna do now? That's milliliters per minute. How do I convert milliliters per minute into milliliters per hour? Just multiply that by 60. So use the number already there, 2.25, I say times 60. And the answer is 135. Exactly. No rounding off. Hey, how do you, if that was not a whole number, how far would you round off? You'd round it off to a whole number. Now, just to show you something, what if I got that 2.25 and I round it off to 2.3? Now, if, that's, if that were, were my final answer to something, some injection, I'd leave it to tenths, right? But don't round, but I'm showing what if I did round this off, which you're not supposed to do, and then multiply that times 60. Hey, that's 138. Not a big difference, but there's a difference. That's why, let me say this again. When you have a number and you're using it in the next calculation, don't round that number off. You only round off the last final answer. That's when you round off. Don't round off before that final answer. So again, we're taking the milliliters divided by the number of minutes if it's less than one hour. That gives us milliliters per minute and multiply that by 60 to convert that into milliliters per hour because you always need milliliters per hour with one of these machines. Now this cropped up in a previous one. I've got 200 milligrams of some medicine, whatever, I don't care what it is. And that's dissolved in 100 milliliters of, in this case, normal saline. And I'm giving this over 45 minutes. What do I do with this number here? Nothing. All I care about is how much liquid do I have, 100 milliliters, and in how much time am I giving it? 45 minutes. This will crop up over and over. You'll be given numbers you don't need. And I mean, you need this in the real world, yes. You have to know in the real world how much medicine to put in your 100 milliliters. But I'm saying for doing the calculations, this number is not involved. All I need to know is I'm gonna give 100 milliliters over 45 minutes. I'm going to give 100 milliliters per 45 minutes. If I take 100 and divide by 45, the answer, of course, is 2.22222222. Okay. Don't round that number off. Since I'm going to use that in my next calculation, just leave that number in your calculator. Then just take that number. What am I going to do with it? Hey, it's 2.22222, et cetera. That's milliliters per minute. One more time, I then multiply by 60, and that will convert that into milliliters per hour. So take that number times 60, 
And the answer is 133.33333. Well, 133.33 can mean it goes on forever and ever. To infinity and beyond. Remember, for all these IV problems, you round off to the nearest whole number, which would be 133. Recall the rule. I need to know what that next number is, but since it's less than 5, I leave this one alone and I'm good with 133. More to go to kind of throw in all different variations of this, but that's how to do these that are less than one hour. It's a little trickier for some people. It causes some you know, indigestion in a Maalox moment, but just deal with it. Learn how to do it.